Hello, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I'm going to show you how to go about loom knitting. It's really easy. It's a lot of fun. It's quite addictive, so beware. And uh, I'm going to show you all the ins and outs. And this is just going to be one of hopefully a series of different tutorials with the different techniques of loom knitting. All right. And as you can see, this is a cute little hat that I whipped up. And it's got a lovely little brim, you know, very, very nice. And, uh, you know, we have here our various loom sizes. Now, typically, they come in a pack. You can buy them individually, although economically, it's a lot cheaper if you buy them all together. I want to say at Michael's, it was about $15. It came with all four sizes. And on top of that, it came with, yes, you're going to need one of these. This is a pick that will help you out. You really can't use a crochet hook. You need something a bit finer. And uh, so it came with this. And on top of that, it also came with a yarn needle, which you will need at the end. Now, as far as the different sizes are concerned, and as far as the different brands are concerned, you know, there will be a different number of pegs, etc., etc. This, however, is the loops and threads brand uh, at Michael's. Um, so this is what I'm using. Now, as far as the, the peg sizes, I mean, this looks gigundo. However, when you're knitting, loom knitting, it does sort of scrunch down and shrinks, as it were. Um, so do not be deceived. You know, this will make an adult-sized hat, and this itty-bitty one will make a, a newborn-sized hat. Now, there are pros and cons to using these. Um, they are very easy. They're very quick. However, you really do need a thick yarn. Uh, it would be a bulky weight, a weight of five. Or there is another trick. You can use two strands of a worsted weight yarn held together. And this is an example that I did using two strands held together, and it creates a really lovely tweed kind of look to it, I think. And this actually is the adult size, the biggie biggie. And so to give you an idea, let me move these aside. So we've got our rather large, and this one is 41 pegs, and this would be for an adult size. And so you would need, by the way, Take notes, if you will. <laughs> um, the full length of the hat from the very bottom to the very top when you're going to do your closure for an adult-sized hat, and you would use the 41 peg, uh, 41 peg loom, you would want approximately 8 to 9 inches from the very base to the very top. And so that's this size right here. And I made another one as well with just a single strand of the bulky weight yarn. And so that's the adult size. Then we have the next size down. And so this one is a total of 36 pegs. And so from the top down to the base, you would want it to be approximately seven to eight inches. Now this one is for a a toddler or a teen, or, you know what, it even fits me, although it is a little bit snug. You know, I mean, I don't have much in the way of hair, so I can get away with wearing this one. It's just a little bit snug for me. And so that is the 36 peg. Then going down another size, this one is the 31 peg. And so this would be for a, a baby or a one-year-old, thereabouts, a small child. And so the length from tip to the bottom would be approximately six and a half to seven inches. And then the itty bitty one, I didn't make a hat, but the itty bitty one, this one is 24 pegs. And so this would be for a newborn and approximately five to six and a half inches from the, the top to the very base. So that gives you an idea as far as the versatility of the different sizes, you know, in approximation. Now, of course, you can go a little bit bigger if you want more of a slouchy look. Um, 
you know, me personally, I say whatever floats your boat, go for it. March to the beat of your own bongos, as I always say. So for this example for today, I am going to use the the uh, the 31 peg and uh, we're going to make a baby hat. Now, the process is exactly the same, no matter what size you're using, but I find that using a smaller uh, smaller loom will be a little bit easier as far as filming is concerned. Now, as far as the yarn goes, I'm going to be using this right here, which I already balled it up. <clears throat> I love this yarn for this particular technique, by the way. It is a weight of five. This is Charisma by Loops and Threads, and it is 109 yards. It is acrylic, and this is in the colorway of Northern Lights. And, yep, it is a weight of five. Now, not all weight of five yarns are created equally. Some of them, they say that they are a weight of five. They're really much thinner. Um, there is another brand called Barcelona, actually, which I happen to have somewhere around here. I do. Uh, let me see here. Bear with me a moment. Ah. Okay. And I got a bit of a tangle. Hang on. I'm getting there. Okay. So this is Barcelona. And it says that it is a weight of five. Actually, it's more of a weight of four. It looks fuzzy wuzzy and it looks thicker, but actually I'm using two strands held together for a project that I'm currently working on. So if the yarn is too thin, it'll look very, very meshy, very lacy, and the hat will not be as enclosed as you want it to be. But this yarn, personally, I have found works out very, very nicely. It goes on sale fairly often if you can get yourself to Michael's. If not, you can always use the two strands of a worsted weight yarn held together, creates a beautiful tweed look, and it's great for stash busting, believe you me. But for this uh, tutorial, I'm gonna be using this yarn right here, and I'm going to use the child-sized hat. And uh, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so to begin with, we are going to need not that much of a tail, just a bit of a tail for sewing in later, and a slip knot. All righty, and then going to put the slip knot on this little peg right here, little side peg, like so. And it doesn't have to be death grip tight because you're going to be taking it off of that peg after a few rounds anyway. And so here I have my tail and here I have my working yarn. All right, so now we are going to cast on. Now to do this, basically it's so simple. You're going to love this. Basically you're going in between those two middle pegs and around the back and looping that yarn around. And then to the next peg, looping the yarn around, to the next peg, looping the yarn around, to the next peg, looping the yarn around. And you don't wanna to be too terribly tight. You don't want it to be so loose that it'll fall off, but you don't want it to be so tight that you won't be able to get the stitches over later. And so just to recap, you know, also you don't want the loops to be in the front like this. You want them to be on the inside. Okay. So if they're on the outside, you're doing it the wrong way. <laughs> you know, usually I try not to be dictatorial about such things, but you know, this technique, you want to get it right. So basically you're going in between the two and around to the next one, and to the next one. Also, I find, well, some people, they lay it flat. Me, personally, I like to hold it upright like this. I think it works much faster because you can just turn the loom as you go. So basically, you're just wrapping around each peg as you go until you get to the very beginning. Now, another thing that I like to do is because you're going to need to do this later is as you're going, push these loops down 
because they need to be down for your next wrap as it is. So I like to pull them down as I go, and we're just going one wrap around each peg and squinch them down as you go. And if you can't push them down, you're probably wrapping a little bit too tight. There are also other methods of using what is referred to as a stylus, where you take a, a pen and the tube of the pen, a ballpoint pen, and you remove the ink and the tip and you thread your yarn through and you use that to thread your yarn around these loops, you know, around these pegs. Personally, I've never really found the need for it. You know, I figure it's yet another, another accoutrement, another tool that you don't necessarily need, but if it helps you, by all means, go for it. All right, so we have come full circle, no pun intended. <laughs> All right, and let me get my little tail of yarn out of the way here. All right, so we have come full circle. So when you have done that, we're just going to be doing the exact same thing for a second pass all the way around. You know, going in the exact same manner so that you now have two loops per peg and you go all the way around also sometimes it helps to hold your yarn as you go so that the loops do not go flying off you know which can be <laughs> can be rather frustrating it's like you did all that work and then all of a sudden poop they go so I do like to hold it as I go upon occasion. And this is another one of those crafts where it there's a lot of mindful, not mindless, mindful repetition, which you know I love. And they, like I said, these are very addictive to make. And they're so easy that you'll find yourself, if you get into it like I did, you'll find yourself making a whole bunch bunch of them. All right, and then around that last peg. All right, so now what you want to do is to grab your pick tool, and we want to lock in that last stitch that we just made. That way, all of these don't go flying off. So to do that, basically, you're going to go underneath, and you're going to pull up that bottom loop and pull it over the top loop. And then, so that the yarn doesn't get all tangled, I like to take this working yarn and put it in between the pegs like so. Then all you have to do for the remainder of the entire round is just take bottom loop and pull it over the top loop. Now, this first one in particular can be a little bit, a little bit tight and a little bit stiff to get off of there, but you can do it, you know. See, this one, much easier, you know, very, very, very easy to do. And however it's comfortable for you to hold the loom, whether it's on your lap or upright as I'm doing it, whatever works, by all means. And so you're just taking that bottom loop and pulling it over the top loop. And then also I find that if, as you go, you pull these loops down, It'll make it easier in the long run. Ta-da! Just like that. And so you just go all the way around, taking your bottom loop, pulling it over your top loop, and then we're going to do the exact same thing over and over and over and over and over, although I'm going to do most of it off camera so as not to bore you into a coma and just push these loops down like so and then over with these loops and also this is a great project 
for kids because, I mean, if they're old enough to use this, I mean, it's not terribly pointed, but, you know, as long as they're old enough to use some certain tools and if they have the motor skills, then by all means, get them into this because you get some really great results and it is, in some respects, a lot easier than crocheting or knitting. Although there's really no particular age, I would say, that is appropriate. I mean, however young they are that they can learn, hey, great, you know. But this is great for even fairly young ages, I think. It's just me and my personal opinion. All right, so we have come full circle once again. All right. And so we are back to the very beginning. And then so what you would do from here is take this working yarn, go around the back again. Okay. Going around the back. See, this is where my yarn is still attached to that last peg in between this node right here. And so then you would keep on going by wrapping around that next peg, the first one of our series, and then the next peg, and the next peg, and then going all the way around just as we had before in this exact same manner until you reach the very beginning. And once you get going, you will be lightning fast, believe me. You know, at first, you know, it's best to go slow, you know, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be going like grease lightning. Hmm. You know, and then when you get to the very beginning again, which I'm just about there, I find that it's always helpful to take that last one that you wrapped, pull the bottom loop over that top loop, and that locks your, your stitches in. That way, they're not going to go anywhere. Alrighty, and then after doing a couple of rounds like this, you would then take this loop off of that peg, and I like to pull it, or push it as the case may be, underneath, come on, there we go, on the inside so that it's not attached to anything anymore. Okay, and so I'm going to keep doing this in the same fashion for a bunch of rounds, approximately mm, four inches or so, and I will meet back up with you. Alrighty, so I've been stitching away, as you can see, and I have, from this point here to the bottom edge, which it does have a tendency of curling, approximately four inches worth of rows. Now the exact number, it will vary depending upon whether you're using a yarn like this or if you're using the two strands held together and of course your tension. Now, so it's approximately four inches. Now at this point, you have a decision to make. You can do one of two things at this point. You know, I mean, as far as my experience, you can either have the bottom of your hat sort of roll up like this a little bit, and this will be the brim of your hat. It's sort of a rolling brim. It's rather cute, very, very simple. You don't have to do anything else with it. It'll just stay like that. And this edge would be the bottom edge of your hat. Now, the other method, which I kind of prefer a little bit more, it's a little bit more work, but it's really not that difficult. It is the cuff. Now, in order to do the cuff, Basically, the reason why I did approximately four inches is because when you fold that in half, it'll be about a two inch brim. You could have it as big or as small as you want to. Just keep in mind that it is going to create a double thickness around your head, which means it'll be a little bit thicker, um, perhaps a little bit tighter. You know, nothing too extreme, just something to keep in mind. Okay, so... What you are going to do, if you want the brim, either way is fine. First, what I like to do is I like to put my yarn in between those first two pegs, okay? And get that out of the way there. Then, what you need to do is then examine the edge 
of your piece. Now I like to go, you know, a stitch or two away from the tail and then deal with that later. You know, you don't have to worry about that just this minute. Now, if you notice, you've got these loops at the bottom here. Now, in between the loops, you have your actual knit stitches. We are going to be working with these big loops, alrighty? Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these loops, these loops, and you're gonna put them onto your pegs, and that's gonna act as your second layer of loops, all right? Now, yes, it can be a little fiddly, but be patient and you can do it. Now, so we have in the middle here, we have our stitches and then we have our loops in between them. So you wanna determine whether or not you want it to be left or right oriented. Me, I go to the right. So basically what it amounts to is these loops are going to go onto this peg, okay? So sort of working your way to the end here, okay? See, I've got this loop right here, tracing it down, okay? So basically this loop is going to go onto this peg right here. I really hope this makes sense, okay? So that goes on to there. And then the next loop in line is going to go onto the next peg, like so. And so forth, and so on. Now you can use your pick tool, although I really don't find that it's always necessary See, I hope that you can get the gist of what I'm doing. You know, I've seen a lot of tutorials on this particular method, and it took me a bit of fiddling and finagling to finally figure out, say that times five times fast, hmm. you know, it took me a bit of finagling and fiddling to figure out exactly what would work. You know, and uh, personally, I find that this works for me. So basically you're putting all those loops onto your pegs. And as I said, this is going to count as your second layer, your second round of loops. And then we're going to pull that bottom loop over these loops. There we go. And that is going to seal the deal as it were. <clears throat> so you don't have to do any sewing and it makes it a lot easier in that aspect. Now you could sew the bottom edge, you know, after you complete your entire hat, you could sew the bottom edge to create your brim. However, doing it this way, personally, I find it's a lot more easy and also on top of that, it's one less step in the long run. You know, see right now, since I'm approaching the end, it is, I think, a little bit easier to use the pick tool. So I'm gonna do that now. There we go, just a couple more to go. Go. Just two more. And that one. And then this one right here. Boop. And this is my tail, which again, I'm not going to concern myself with that right this second. And I've got my working yarn in between those two first pegs. Now, basically, all it really amounts to is, like I said, taking that bottom loop and pulling it over our brim loops, and that's gonna lock it in place. And we do this all the way around. And then, of course, as like we did before, once you do 
that locking into place, you can sort of scooch these loops down. As for this tail end, we can sew that in later, no big deal. And so then when you have gotten all the way around, you'll continue to do your regular loom knit stitches, just as you had prior when you were making the cuff. Now, making the cuff, like I said, it is not absolutely necessary by any means. Personally, I think that it's just a nice way of creating a finished edge to each their own is what I always say. You know, and there are other methods as well. You could do a a ribbing at the at the bottom as well. Personally, I mean, I like the way that it looks. However, um, doing purl stitches, <laughs> doing purl stitches with loom knitting, yes, you can do it, and it's really not that bad. But I like to just do the knit stitches, and this is a way of creating a brim where you don't need to do any purl stitches, which I find preferable. And depending on how this tutorial does, you know, like if you guys like it and if you want me to, um, you know, I could do alternate methods for doing your brim as well. Um, you know, different stitches, etc., etc. You know, I mean, if you guys want it, then I will try to accommodate by all means. All right, and we're almost there to the very beginning. You know, and I could continue on trying to make it into a series, perhaps. All right, so that is all of the stitches. They are now all locked into place, and we have a lovely finished edge. And then, like I said, all you would do now is continue on doing your wrapping all the way around and then locking that last stitch into place just as we had just before, okay? So now, depending upon the size that you're going to be doing. For me, because this is the what the the second size up, I'm going to be making this about seven inches from this bottom edge to the very top. You know, and then I'll show you how to do sort of a, a drawstring method. It's so easy. I love it. Um, but keep in mind that depending upon the size, that will determine um, the well the, determining excuse me, depending upon the size of the loom, that will determine the size of the hat that you would want. Whether it is the small one at five to six and a half, this size, about seven inches, the uh, the large, the 36 peg, which is about seven to eight inches, or the 41 peg, which is about eight to nine inches. So get to work and uh, meet back up with me when you have the the length from this bottom edge to the finished edge and I will be right back. Alrighty. Hello again. So as you can see, I have been knitting my way along and I've got this really nice cuff going on here. I have the body of my hat. Now, when you lay it out flat from this point here with a tape measure, I measured from here all the way to this bottom edge and it's approximately seven inches. So for this size knit loom, this is as far as I want to go. So that being said, now we do the bind off. Now you have two options. I mean, you have more, but you know, as far as I, you know, with my experience, you have two options at this point. Now, what you can do is you can run this yarn through all of your loops, or you can decrease the number of loops so that it isn't quite so you know, bunchy at the top, which I really prefer. So that being said, I'm going to show you how to do the decrease, and then I'm going to show you how to do the bind off, and that will pretty much conclude how to make a really nice hat. So to do the decreasing, it's really quite simple, actually. Basically, what it amounts to is taking one of your loops, 
and placing it over the following hook. Actually, I should do it the other way. Makes it a little bit easier, like so. There we go. You know, it's a little bit tricky. All right, so, and then take your bottom loop and pass it over the top loop, just like before. So this one is going to remain without a loop. Then skip over to your next one. And again, grabbing the loop and passing it over to the next peg. Place it on there. Bottom loop over the top loop. So you've got these two pegs without any stitches. And so basically we're going to be doing the exact same thing all the way around where, you know, we just did this one and then we're going on to the next one, moving the loop over to the next peg, bottom loop over the top loop. And you're going to do this all the way around until you reach the very beginning. Now, keep in mind that the number of pegs is not quite often an even number. That is okay. You know, I mean, it's not going to be 100% perfect, but then again, most of life usually isn't. So same thing applies for if you're going to be doing a, a ribbing, you know, you're going to have a miscount of by one or so. Sometimes these loops can be a little bit fiddly, but with a little bit of persistence, there we go. And perseverance, you make do. All right, and then bottom loop over that top loop. It can be a little bit tight too. All right, so I'm going to be keep, keep on, keep it on with this same exact technique all the way around. And if I have two that are next to each other at the end, that's okay. It's not life-threatening, trust me. Since it's going to be at the top of the hat and it's going to be all bunched together anyway, it's no problem. So I'm going to work my way around and I will show you what to do next. Okay. Alrighty, just as I was saying before, this is going to be my last bottom loop over the top loop. And sure enough, yep, I have two pegs right next to each other and that's okay because, like I said, it's going to be all bunched at the top anyway, so do not fret. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to run this yarn through all of the loops that we have left, and we have half as many, so it's going to be a lot easier to get through at the end. So now, to make sure that you have enough yarn, what I like to do is take your working yarn and wrap it around the entire loom, like so, and then go just a little bit more for good measure, because you can't add more. You can remove more, but you can't add more, especially at this point. All right, so that being said, what we're going to do now is what I find a clever little way of getting these, you know, getting this working, you know, strand of yarn through these loops without even using a yarn needle, which is fabulous. So basically putting the yarn below those loops, okay, going down through the loop and grabbing the tail and pulling it through. You will need a yarn needle later, trust me, but right now you really don't need one. So again, doing the same thing going down, grabbing the yarn, and pulling it up. And you're going to do this with each and every loop that you still have on your loom. Until you reach the very, very beginning again. Like 
like so. So I'm going to do the rest of these off camera and I will meet back up with you when we're ready to go to the next step. Okie dokie. All right, so I ran my tail of yarn through all of my remaining loops on the loom and now comes the fun part. Now we're going to take it off the loom entirely. So very, very simply, just going to pop all of the loops off of the loom. I find this part really, really gratifying because it's like, yep, all my work, it's finished. Now what you can do is just work the loops that you pulled the yarn through, keeping some of the loops still on the loom so that it doesn't go flying all over the place. And then we can cinch up the top, sew in the ends, and we will be done. We are very, very, very close. Can you feel it? Can you sense the, the anticipation of glory? Absolutely love doing these. And like I said, they are very quick. All right, so now we just get this last loop off of my loom here. There we go. And we are ready to rock and roll. So this is the outside of the hat. So we're gonna turn it inside out to do our finishing. Alrighty. And then the paste de resistance. All you need to do at this point is pull it like a drawstring and cinch it up. Now, obviously, there is a bit of a hole at the top. That is okay because we can fix that with our handy dandy yarn needle. And also at this point, I don't need quite this much yarn at the end, but when you're doing the bind off, it is very helpful to do so. So that being said, what I like to do is I like to go through those loops once again with my yarn needle, gathering them all up again and securing them and then knot them at the end. So just gonna go through these loops. And again, since this is going to be really bunched up at the top of the hat, you know, I usually like to think that neatness counts in this particular case I would not say that it is 100% crucial. Now, another thing that you can do at this point is you can make and add a pom-pom or a tassel or, you know, any other sort of embellishment that you want. You know, personally, with these, I just like to leave them plain. You know, I think that the the hat speaks for itself and it's really quite nice as it is. That and when I was a kid and I had pom-poms on my hats, they always got ripped off by less than savory schoolmates. <laughs> so I, I prefer not to put pom-poms on my hats. All right. And then what I'm gonna do is going through another loop and here we go. Going to wrap my yarn around, then pull through that last loop to create, come on, 
<laughs> to create a knot. And I split my yarn. Isn't that nice? There we go. All right, so I got a little bit of a knot right there. And then I'm going to knot it again. And then I'm going to go through a couple more loops and then I'm gonna cut that off. And then as far as dealing with our first tail, what I like to do, I'm gonna show you real quick. All right, how I like to work in this tail is going underneath these loops right here. And I like to go through for, you know, a couple of inches or so. And you don't want to pull it too tight. Just want to run it through. And then when you're done, you just trim off the end. I haven't had any issues with this whatsoever. And because it's on the inside of the cuff, it's not going to show on the other side. Even better. All right, <clears throat> and then snip that right off. Ta -da! Then turn your hat right side out, and you're done. It's a beautiful thing. And looking at the top, it's nice, it's closed, it's even. And if you had all of your loops from the loom, that you cinched around, it would have been, there would have been a lot more loops, so it would have been a lot more bunchy at the top. So this is my personal preference as far as doing the, the bind off. And there you have it. A very simple, very cute loom knit hat from start to finish with various techniques that I hope you will find useful. And if you did like this tutorial, please give me a little thumbs up button down below because as always, I do appreciate your appreciation. And, you know, also please hit subscribe for more because I do try to post videos as often as I can, whether it's knitting or loom knitting, <laughs> crocheting, audiobook narration, or my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, where I do video game playthrough and commentary. It's a lot of fun. Would love to see you there too. And uh, until next time, my dears, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.